All right, let's try out these practice problems for the math a multi-subject CST exam for teacher certification. So we have an equation here, and our goal is to see what the value of x is. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rewrite the problem. 4x minus 3 minus x wrapped in parentheses is equal to 7 times x minus 3 plus 10. So our goal is to get x by itself. So when it comes to solving equations, the first thing you want to do is try to get rid of any parentheses because they're going to get in our way. And the way we're going to get rid of these parentheses here, here, and here is by using what's called the distributive property. So we have a number out in front of the parentheses. Here it's 7. And we're going to distribute it into both um, numbers inside the parentheses. So we'll be doing 7 times x and 7 times, be careful here, negative 3. And same thing here. What we have here actually is a, an invisible 1, which we don't write usually. So it's a negative 1 here. You can think of it like that. So we have negative 1 distributing times 3 times negative x. And everything else will keep the same for now. Let's go to our new line. So 4x, we didn't do anything with that. And now we have our first distribution. Negative 1 times 3 will give us negative 3. Negative 1 times negative x will give us a positive 1x, or just x. Because negative times a negative gives us a positive. Equals 7 times x gives us 7x. 7 times negative 3 will give us negative 21. Positive times negative gives us a negative. And in the plus 10, we didn't do anything with that. Now that our parentheses are out of the way, what we want to do is see if we have any like terms that we can add together. So on the left side, I see we have a 4x and a 1x. These are like terms. We can go ahead and combine those to be a 5x. So let's do that. 4x plus 1x is 5x. And in the minus 3, we didn't do anything to that. So I'll just leave it alone. Equals. On the right side, do we have any like terms? Let's see here. We only have one x term, so that's not going to combine with anything. We have a negative 21 and a plus 10. Two numbers. Without a variable. So let's add those together. So 7x, we did not do anything with that. And negative 21 plus 10 gives us negative 11. All right, so we're almost done here. Now we want to get all the terms with the x, x on one side of the equation and the terms without an x on the other side of the equation. It doesn't matter if you move all the x terms to the left and all the numbers to the right, or if you move all the x terms to the right and move all the numbers to the left. It's a choice. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to look at the x terms so I'm looking at this 7x here, and I'm looking at this 5x, and I'm saying to myself, which one's bigger? The 7x is bigger. So because the 7x is bigger on the right side, I want to move all my x terms to the right side. So let's go ahead and do that. So because I want this 5x to, to not be on the left side, I want to do the opposite. So remember, this, is, this 5x is a positive 5x, a plus 5x. You could think of it like that. So to, do, to get rid of it, I want to do the inverse or the opposite operation. So I want to subtract 5x. And now here's the key idea with equations. Because we have an equal sign here, what you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side. That's how you keep it equal. That's how you keep it balanced. So I subtract 5x from the left side, I have to subtract 5x from the right side. Now let's see what that gives us now. On the left, 
this positive 5x will cancel out with negative 5x. That was our goal, right? And then we'll get a negative 3 by itself is equal to 7x minus 5x. It's just 7 minus 5, which is just 2. But it's 7 but remember, it's not just 2, it's 2x. You can give us 7 apples minus 5 apples will give us 2 apples. Instead of apples, we have x, 2x. And then negative minus 11, we did not do anything with that. All right, since we brought our variables to the right side, we want to bring all the numbers to the left side. This negative 11 needs to go because it's on the right side. So the opposite of negative 11 or minus 11 is going to be plus 11. And like an equation, we do to one side, you have to do to the other side. I have to add 11 on the left side. All right, now let's see what we have here. On the left side, we have ne negative 3 plus 11. That gives us 8. And then that's going to be equal to 2x. And then this minus 11 and this plus 11, they'll cancel out. So we have 8 equals 2x. And now the last step is, we don't want 2x. We want x. So because we have, remember, on the side here, 2x is the same as 2 times x. We just, we just don't like to write the multiplication symbol when we don't need to. 2x is the same as 2 times x. So we're multiplying a 2 by the x. To get x by itself, we'll have to get rid of this 2. Since 2 is multiplying on the x, we want to do the opposite or the inverse of multiplying. So we want to divide by 2. Divide by 2. And just like before, if we do it to one side of the equation, we have to do it to the other side of the equation. So, what is our final answer here? 8 divided by 2 will give us 4. And 2x divided by 2 these twos will cancel in a way, and 4 is equal to x, or which is the same thing as x is equal to 4. And which one of our choices x equals to 4? That is c, x is equal to 4. Hopefully all those steps made sense.